The Commission for Eastwood Hill Arboretum was a hundred year master plan looking at the future of what has now been designated as the National Arboretum of New Zealand. The Arboretum began as a working sheep farm under Russell Cook, who owned it, and began, he began uh, writing letters to bring plants in from all over the world. It has now become the largest collection of northern hemisphere trees in the entire southern hemisphere. It's an extraordinary place and has now received the designation as the National Arboretum of New Zealand. We began work on it about seven years ago, doing a master plan to start to reorganize the connect collection into the World Wildlife Fund uh, mapping of biomes of the planet Earth. It has some of the only examples of the world's trees that exist in New Zealand. It's an absolutely extraordinary collection and well worth a visit. The aim of the project was to look 100 years out and try to understand how this collection could make a place for itself on the global stage of large conservation collections and botanic gardens. As the repository of so many important plants from the Northern Hemisphere within New Zealand, in many cases they're the only example of those plants that exist in New Zealand. So for research, scientific research, and also for propagation, it's a very important collection. Um, over the hundred years of its existence, a lot of the trees were unfortunately planted very close to each other and without much sense of order. Like as plants arrived, uh, Cook would plant them out. And so now that they're a hundred years old, some of them are crowding each other out. So how do we carefully propagate and reorganize the collection so that it makes sense um, and it also has a, a long-term uh, resiliency? One of the challenges with Eastwood Hill Arboretum is, I think, the remoteness of its location and the fact that very few people know it exists. Um, I think once people go there, they are absolutely blown away and they become uh, avid supporters of the Botanic Garden. I think greater visibility on the national and international stage uh, will be critical to the long-term success of Eastwood Hill Arboretum. And to that end, I've been working with the Board of Trustees to create an American Friends of Eastwood Hill Arboretum. And we have just completed the establishment of that organization so that donors who understand the global importance of Eastwood Hill Arboretum and its collection could provide donations to the park in New Zealand and get uh, tax benefits, tax credits in the United States. So we created a nonprofit in the U.S. exclusively to benefit Eastwood Hill Arboretum. Uh, one of the important ideas that we were able to bring to the master planning process at Eastwood Hill is to build on Cook's vision of this as a repository of Northern Hemisphere plants at an era where he was very concerned about nuclear holocaust in the Northern Hemisphere. He was thinking about all of these trees being in New Zealand, a very remote place, able to survive nuclear holocaust and in that event, should that tragedy have ever happened, you could repatriate these trees back to the Northern Hemisphere. Now, in the 21st century, one of the greatest threats is global climate change. And we're finding species in the Northern Hemisphere dying out either from uh, climate extremes or from pests, uh, introduced fungi or uh, insects. So as we're losing some of these keystone species in our Northern ecologies, perhaps Eastwood Hill could build on that uh, sort of cultural history and vision of Cook, but update it for the 21st century. And it could become an, what we've called an arboreal arc, where live specimens could be brought to New Zealand, put through quarantine to make sure that we're not bringing, introducing any pathogens to New Zealand, and then planted out in the collection in the different families of plants at Eastwood Hill for stewardship. Should we ever be able to eradicate some of the pests like Dutch Elms disease or the woolly adelgid or the uh, emerald ash borer, these uh, pests that have absolutely wiped out the populations in the Northern Hemisphere, if we had a safe a diverse population of 50 to 100 trees in Eastwood Hill, we could then perhaps repatriate to the Northern Hemisphere. This could be of global significance as a kind of arc from which we could bring back the biodiversity uh, much needed in the, in the Northern Hemisphere. I think if I were to, to encourage you to visit Eastwood Hill Arboretum, I would try to, to inspire you by uh, the, the ability to go to Natapa, New Zealand, outside of Gisborne, and actually travel the world through trees because there are collections from Argentina, from China, from Mexico, uh, North America, Canada, all over Europe. And so you can, in a sense, walk the world in one afternoon at Eastwood Hill.